Welcome back to another episode of On the Road with Rattlesnake Roy. I am, of course, am Rattlesnake Roy. Um, this episode is episode eight, and I'm doing this one with one of my good friends. I really enjoy him. I really enjoy talking to him, Chris Vargas. Um, he's been on the podcast before. I'm sure we'll talk about many of the things that he's done since then and that we did talk about on the podcast. He, like myself, is a fellow postman. Um, That means from post, for all you idiots out there. Um, You know, we share a lot of of common interests. He's a sneakerhead. You know, cool guy. And um, I'm sure this is going to be a really good one. I want to say right now, I just, you know, while I'm thinking... um, and this is my own fault because I, you can call it lazy, whatever. I don't give a fuck about. Well, I do. I do actually. I care about the quality of this, of this, of these um, episodes, and the now that it's, it's on audio only now. I mean, it's on audio now too, so you can get it like on Spotify and shit. And it's own. It's its own thing. You will have to search the Snake Pit Rattlesnake Snake Royal on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you can subscribe, please, and rate. That would be lovely. But. I care about the um, the overall quality. I do. I want you guys. You know, I want what's best for me and my my shit. So I mean, obviously, I want you guys to have really good shit. But I'm not a fucking expert. I don't know. I had a dork production. Maybe I should have them again. They fixed my audio on my podcast on the Roadcaster. So I don't know nothing about this shit. I don't know how to like the settings. I don't even want to know. I'm not interested in that shit. And maybe that is just lazy, laziness on my part. But whatever. So I'm just letting you guys know this is also like the. If you go back to the early, early episodes of the podcast, it was rough. It still kind of is rough, but it's way worse. And um, so I'm gonna, you know, gradually and piece by piece put this shit together and fix the production. So I'm sorry that, you know, sometimes I don't get it right. Again, I don't. I have no interest in that shit and that's my fault so like like i've said on the snake pit i i, I care about the quality of the con of the conversation that is the most important thing so if you find that the visuals suck well listen and if you think it, the audio sucks i'm very sorry fucking watch it i don't know i'm sorry it is um it's all about the conversation mainly and I'm also driving. I'm legitimately driving. I'm sober as fuck, but I'm also driving. So that is um, another task in itself to drive and make sure that we get safely through 30 minutes of 30, 45 minutes of episode. So I'm sorry that um, you know it might not be the best. It might not be the best conversation as well. But I'm trying. What can you do? I hope you guys stick with me, and if you're with me now, I really appreciate y'all. Please hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, um, please check out my website, buy my merch, subscribe to the Patreon. It's $3 a month, and if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Don't even be my friend. If you say you're my friend and you're not subscribed, you're not my friend. That's just the truth. It's easy. It's free. Two seconds. And if you got a YouTube channel that you want me to subscribe to, I will. I've got like 20 episodes, 20 different YouTube accounts that I'll subscribe to. So that's that. And, uh, hope you guys enjoy this one, man. I, I think it's a really good one. <laughs> Alrighty, man. We're live. We're ready to go. Live with the Texas rattlesnake, Roy? <laughs> no, I can't take that name. That's, uh, that's stone cold, man. That's, that's stone cold. That's awesome. Yeah, man. How you been? What's going on? You're live. Man, I've been good. Just been working on trying to finish up the Death Star Chronicles, man. So bef- on the last podcast that I did with you, yes. we were literally like maybe like a week before we went out to go shoot it. Yeah. So then we went to go shoot it. And now the post-production process has been super interesting because we're doing everything virtually, which makes things just take a lot longer than they would if you were all in the same room. Gotcha. So that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Who's doing it? Like the hands-on you are? Uh, yeah. So me and the producer of Blame Mountain, we are pretty much like 50-50 in the whole process of like getting everything done. Um, a lot of what took quite a while was making sure that we got all of the music rights for everything. Because obviously, you know, I mean, our show is about sneakerheads. So we definitely wanted like a lot of the city of Dallas artists 
on the first episode. Oh, shit, that's cool. So, yeah, so we got a lot of um, local artists there in Dallas to sign off on some things. In fact, um, one of the rappers, his name is Coach Tev. Solid guy. Really cool dude. Uh, he actually helped us shoot the whole thing. Oh, okay. Which was awesome, yeah. He was like the uh, he was like the second camera unit, which was dope. It was oh, really cool to have some uh, some different eyes on it. Was it a difficult process getting those wrangling everybody up? The music. The music, the music was tough, just because like um, originally we didn't have anything uh, to score with. Uh, we were gonna have some guys score it for us, uh, but that was just gonna take too long, so. Uh, then we reached out to, um, his name's Blue, I believe. Uh, I have to check. <laughs> but, uh, Shout out to you, uh, Rodney, <laughs> my bad, his name's Rodney. He goes by Blue on Instagram, oh, but okay. it, Rodney's his name. Um, I just, I'm so used to calling people by their, their Instagram handles now. Yeah, man, it's no weird. government names. <laughs> <laughs> so it's wild, but, um, uh, so anyway, so we reached out to him because he has a better relationship with, uh, with a couple of different artists out there, and so we were able to get... Uh, quite a bit of tracks, man. I'm excited about it because it's just kind of cool, just kind of nice. Yeah, damn, I didn't even think like that. So, how, how does that work? You have to go through like lawyers and shit? Like, yeah, we had to sign off on some uh, just like exclusive rights for the show. Like, we're, because it's not officially monetized or anything like that, yeah, we're able to give those royalties back on over to them. So, you know, get them some clout, get us some clout, everybody uh, gets paid. Nah, so, y'all kept it like. Legit, legit oh man. yeah we've tried to be like 100 percent about the whole process man when are you expecting to have it all so said I, and done so i just announced it like literally right before you got here i just posted it up on instagram august oh, 6th oh okay yeah. that's next week right yeah next friday oh, fuck. so next friday we'll have that bad boy out where uh where can they get it so it's going to be exclusively on YouTube. We may drop it on Vimeo as well. Uh, still debating. So it's free? Yeah, it's going to be free. Absolutely oh, free. So we just want people to check it out uh, and give us some feedback. Were you expecting to get any like return on it? Or you just wanted to put something the out? The first one, no. The first one we were really using is more of like a pitch. That's what know? I mean. So is that how like you know Netflix or somebody could be like, oh, y'all got a show? Can we? Man, Netflix is a whole different type of beast. Well, you know what I mean. Just like, but a, like, like a streaming platform. Yeah, a lot of it is just like... Um, the route that we wanted to go with it was kind of the route uh, that Issa Rae did with her Awkward Black Girl series. Have you ever heard of that? I've never even heard of that. So Issa Rae, she's like really big comedian writer, like really big. Like she just signed off on like I think like a $50 million deal with HBO Max. Oh my God. Yeah, her show. So how we got into this whole thing, her show, Awkward Black Girl, she shot it kind of just like this, just like in her car on the way to work like she well, wrote directed everything produced it all herself it's just a super short series and uh obviously it's fictional right it's not like true to life or whatever but um so she did all of that and she made like i think like four or five maybe a full season of the episodes and people really loved it it got the eye of hbo oh. hbo reached out to her it's an actual tv show now Aqua Black Girl. Uh, How crazy is that? Uh, yeah, man. I just I'm keep you familiar with uh, Andrew Schultz, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you think something like that? Like yeah. you know, he was doing his YouTube. I mean, his uh, Instagram lives. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then he got a fucking Netflix series. Yeah, it. it's yeah. all just about do you have an audience, and do you have an audience that we can market to? You know. That's where the money is. Huh? That that is exactly where the money is. Do you have an audience? Can you sell it, that audience? So when when y'all were doing all this, mm -hmm. you, you were like fucking. Are you paying everybody, or is it all like? Uh, man, voluntary? a lot of it's a lot of it's uh, favors that we are asking of. You know, it's because, a lot of faith. Like, oh, maybe we'll this will work out for one way or another. Type right, shit. exactly. Because you know, like uh, our DP, his that. name is Jonathan. He didn't have to do it. I mean, that guy is definitely making some crazy good money right That's now. That's one of the toughest things about like creating content mm -hmm. even like for me my youtube like i have a lot of things i want to do right and i have the fucking equipment to do it it's right. just like can't i i have getting, i have to ask people to do it for free getting the bodies yeah it's, for, it's basically bodies. it is a favor i'm like and right. i hate that and i don't want right. like i wish i could pay people to fucking come do this shit because then you can't hate on somebody for like not wanting to do something because it's free. right it's especially free. when it's free they're like yeah. well, how much does it pay yeah and really like, i know a lot man, of like just nothing. i would i hate to be this guy but i think a lot of just society's like not doing anything for free right they're not yeah. gonna do it for free it's hard it's yeah. really hard because you're is. asking 
to give you're asking someone to give them your time which yeah. as like, you get older um, like you realize like dang bro time is such a commodity like because you can't produce any more you can always yeah. produce more money but you can't produce more time the one thing everybody wants yeah. but on the same hand it's like and I was uh, I was hanging out with Riley because we did that photo shoot I saw that yeah, I was gonna ask and do uh, you think you can hold that it's gonna yeah, my battle. bad. sorry oh, my bad no it's alright but uh but we were talking about it and we were like you know as an artist you want to help people you know but then as just a human being you do got to get paid too at some point you know yeah even if it's just like free lunch yeah which is what we did we you know we got everybody breakfast we got everybody lunch we got everybody okay. coffee and drinks so we had a little snack bar if you're and like stuff. me if, if you're like me man if somebody said I, i'll pay you lunch i'll do a lot of things right i'll say that right now and so yeah. like, i'll give you free dinner well let's do it <laughs> or beer. Let me just say that too. Beer. That's it. Beer's my thing. That's usually how it goes. Even just as being like a friend, you know, somebody's yeah. like, "Hey, can you help me move?" I'm like, "All right," and they're like, "We're getting pizza." I'm like, "All right, cool." Then I'm there, yeah. you know. But it's just one of those things. Where it is hard to find people who will believe in you and your vision and really see it come to fruition. Did you, know you I mean? have? So did you have difficulties, or was it? No, Pretty I mean, easy. everybody that we talked to about it was genuinely interested in the project. Like, they felt really good about it um, because I think we did a really good job of pitching it to them. So now it's it's taking our original idea and making it an actual thing and letting people watch. I think we've gone through, like, this will probably be, like, the fifth draft that we have done of the episode. And even just, like, shooting it, like, you know, after I've shot it, I should say, um, there are some things that we wish that we could change, but again, you know, it's one of those things. Can we round up 30 people for a day? You know, when everybody's schedule is that's so busy. That's what you're doing. Yeah, man, that's yeah. a. It, it's a pretty big crew um, for just as simple as the episode may seem. Just getting everything to look the same was hard, really hard. Just same light up situation and. Being mic'd up and all that other good stuff, man, that was... So all the equipment and all that, that came out of your pocket? Uh, so we had some stuff lended to us, which was awesome. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but yes, everybody else brought their, kind of like their own equipment, whatever they had, they brought with them. I brought, actually, a lot of uh, the main character, Mike, his apartment, a lot of his apartment is actually just stuff for out of my house. So when I drove to Dallas, I drove to Dallas with a lot of stuff from my house. Just okay. We just set it up in the studio room, which was dope. So yeah, all like the sneakers and stuff like that. Even some of the other sneakers, like uh, another character, his name is, is Mike. All those shoes were like my friend's shoes because oh, they okay. were the same size. So Damn. yeah, so it actually really worked out, which is awesome. How many uh, episodes did y'all do? So we have six planned, okay. but we've only shot the first one. Which oh. most people, when they're oh, okay. shooting things, they'll shoot a whole season. Right? Yeah, that's what I thought y'all did. But uh, but this is kind of like we're trying to figure out. We're trying to get some feedback because so that's what you so need, this right? This is a pilot, okay. right? This is just the pilot. Oh, okay. This is just the pilot. So that's why we want to take. I think each episode is going to be like maybe like seven to eight minutes, right? And uh, at the end of the six episodes, we'll take those best moments and then try to pitch that over to Netflix or HBO Max. Damn. What? So th that's the plan. That's the goal. But we'll that see. So exciting. Yeah, man, it, it's really exciting. It's it's awesome. It feels good, but man, it's also a lot of work. Like a lot of behind the scenes stuff is like, oh my. Like, what, what would you say is the most one of some of the more like things you didn't expect that were like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, the stuff that like threw me off. Yeah, that, um, that kind of just knocked you on your toes. The hard part was like, originally when we were setting everything up, I planned out all the shot list. So like, I took references from TVs and movies that I really liked put them all in like this like just a sheet just so I could go through with my DP and explain to him what I was looking for we shot it all which was awesome but as we were going through the first edit and we we're like some of this just doesn't hit as fast as what we want to you know because the audience unfortunately isn't going to give us any time to get situated and set up for the jokes they want the funny like that you know what i mean yeah especially because and that's the hard part with like tiktok and stuff like that like everybody can make something that's funny for 30 seconds to a minute 
and they want that joke right then and there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of difficult to really kind of let the world breathe, but that's why it's a web series and not like a movie. You know? Okay. So that's because that's the other thing because nobody has to watch this. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even though we put all this work into it, nobody has to watch it. Just like even this episode, you know, we're just hanging out, having a good time, but nobody has to watch it. It's appreciated when you watch it and hit that like button. Please. Show some love. Subscribe. Share it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like hardcore dead set on that. I try to make that statement like every Dude, time. Cause, me too. Because it is something that, unfortunately, we don't do enough of. Like, um, there was a guy last year when the pandemic first started. Um, he was doing videos called, um, hey, dad, how do I blank, right? And originally when he started, when I first found the video, I think he had like maybe 73 subscribers. By the end of the week, because everybody loved the idea, they loved it so much they shared it around, I thought I had like 2.7 million. What the fuck? In a week. I wish that would happen for me, Shit. A week, son. Oh my so God. So that's why I'm like, I am dead serious when I when I say support your friends, man. Like literally, like if, if they mow lawns, have them mow your lawn. If they cut hair, have them cut your hair. If they sell clothes, buy some clothes. You know, like awesome. do that because you know what, man? When you support your friends, like that money comes back around, bro. That money is here yeah. in the community. You know what I mean? Like That's how I've felt doing this. I'm like, you know, I, I do believe what goes around comes around to like if you you know you know it might be a little expensive or you might not want to spend money but if you do and especially if you're you're also selling shit people might right think the same way and right. help you out also like liking and sharing i've said it again it's free it's it super is free ex- just two two fucking seconds and it hurts nobody it goes away in 24 hours right <laughs> it's not even a big deal yeah what's crazy is like um even like for stuff like um a cousin my cousin he was doing like a he was raising money for like als or whatever yeah and so he was gonna do a walk or whatever and he posted it i just reshared it i didn't say anything about it i just reshared it and just kept it going got an extra hundred bucks there you go that's it that's it man it doesn't take much it's it doesn't hurt nobody you know it's just it's one of those things and i always wonder like uh is it do you think it's like a mexican thing like that our people don't support each other. I, 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 because that's a real thing. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, obviously, we could probably say that because we know that world. Right. I think it's a, uh, and I hate to say it, I really do. I think it's a jealousy thing. That's what I'm saying. I, and I think no, I think it's just like a human. You think like, it's just like, a human thing? It's not like, a Mexican thing. You got a lot, <laughs> like if you, yeah, I think it's like if you have, because I've noticed that you got a lot of people who say you could be cool with, and they just right, like, and and maybe they they're scared to do something they're like you know they wish they tried and they wish and then they put that on you and they're like well, fuck that i didn't win so he shouldn't win right and i think that's a lot what that's is. what but mexicans sucks, are man. fucking haters man jesus Dude. christ <laughs> i have no I, have, I don't think i have very much uh fan base from mexicans i really don't right and that's because you are mexican <laughs> yeah right? that's what i'm saying like, I'm like, like that's the, the hard part like i know a lot of people thought Chris Vargas was my stage name. I'm like, no, that's my actual name. Yeah. I'm actually Mexican. <laughs> yeah. So it's a weird thing, man. Like, I uh, I genuinely, like, don't understand that part. That's yeah. the one part about our people that I, I do wish it was a little bit different. Just being able to support each other. I don't understand about, each like, other. the community. It's just like, we're a community. Like, let's support each other. Let's. There's no room for hate. And, and there's no room for bullshit, man. We're all trying to, like... It's, you've just said it. It's hard to fucking... Unless you get lucky, like that two million thing, man. That's, right. That sounds that's, lucky. That's lightning in the bottle, it's right like, there. Unless you get lucky, it's a fucking grind. Yeah. And it's hard, and it it's is. hard enough to make it, regardless of who you are. Like, why would you add stress to all that, man? That's why I'm like, you know, I just need positivity. Yeah, man. I, I don't need any like that shit. That's why, like, you have to surround yourself with people who yes. want to see you succeed, want to help you succeed, yeah. and like. When stuff comes up like this today, you know, you hit me up. I was like, yeah, bro, I'm down. I don't have anything planned. I'm with it. Because I see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Swagdelic, I'm excited to see y'all stuff, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm hyped. So, bitch, he's out of town right now. Is so he out of town? We couldn't film today. <laughs> he's living a good life, man. He, I see uh, his Instagram. I'm like, dang. Man, it's balling out here. He, he is. He's a he's a little older. I think he, well, you're, you're 
you're, I think he's younger than you, actually, but he's like, you, know, you guys are older than me. Right. And it's it's good to hear, like, he knows, like, I don't know, he's just a good, like, he's basically like my guru. Yeah. I like fucking being around oh, he's, him. He's, in, he's different, but I like being around him. Yeah, no, he's good people, man. Yeah. He's real chill. He's, uh... I mean, it just seems genuine, which yeah. is kind of nice, because yeah. you don't get that a lot these days, unfortunately, you know? Yeah. There are a lot of people that are just kind of, like, with agendas, you know? Yeah. So it's real hard to find people who are genuine, so... Yeah, yeah. it's unfortunate. Yeah. And it's it's a, a lot of... Again, it goes back to that money. I think a lot of people just want money. Absolutely. Oh, which you don't get me wrong. I do Right. Too. Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't want money, you know? Yeah, they, but it... It's so much more fun when you can get it with your friends. Then. Yes, you know yes, what I mean. Yes, yes, exactly. It's so much more it's, fun. Like it's so fun being around the homies, hanging out. Just having the because uh, one of the other things I do is season three. Yeah, and, I was gonna ask uh, about that. So that's been going really well. We're trying to figure out if we want to open a store or not in Dallas area, but um, with obviously with COVID the way that it is right now, it's kind of like it's hard to know which way to move in the brick and mortar store you know because who knows you know we don't know are y'all so, set up online right now yeah everything has been set up online and we've been doing really well online but we just kind of like we've always wanted to have a store like we just think that that's a cool you know like a gentleman hangout spot that's what i want <laughs> like a place where you can go and take dope photos with your shoes pick up some merch like, yeah sort of like riley's place yeah man that place is dope bro yeah. that place is way dope i was yeah. just there what tuesday yeah i yeah. saw that so that was cool. That was fun. That was the first time I actually met Riley. Oh, really? Yeah. I hadn't met him before. Yeah, we I just saw y'all linked up. up. I was like, huh, oh, I didn't know y'all were friends. Yeah. I've actually known his dad for a really that's long time. That's what he time. told me, actually. Yeah. Yesterday, he told me that. <laughs> we were at the bar yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. That's what wild. I've yeah. known his dad since I was like 12. I never met, never once met Riley through that whole time. That's, that's weird. So crazy. It's because his dad and my uncle are like best friends. Yeah. And, uh, I forgot he told me that yesterday. And my uncle... Well, he's like my father figure because I didn't, I didn't have my dad. I had my grandpa and my uncles, and so uh, so I would always hang out with my uncle a lot, and so we'd go over to their house. But he was never there whenever, you know, I would go over. So that's so wild. So to finally like <laughs> meet him was like, oh my god, this is so crazy. That's weird. Yeah, like you look just like your dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is awesome. Like, that's funny. I love James. He's a cool dude. Right, he's a goofball. Yeah, so we had a good time, man. We had fun. I actually uh, watched the episode with him, just because I was like, "Yo, you want to check this out?" Because I always like oh, I want to cool. grab my friend's feedback. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of nice. I would play it for you, but I changed it since then. So. Oh shit. Just a little thing. Just it plays better. And that's the other thing is like, as a director, you don't want to get too married to your work. Yeah. You know, you want to be able to cut stuff out. And I was so married to that first draft. I was <laughs> like, "No, I gotta hear it from other people." All right, okay, we'll cut some out. Because <laughs> there was just a long buildup, which, um, so just kind of give you the insight. Like the first episode, um, we had a moment where he's looking through, at the very beginning of the episode, he's looking through like old photos of him and his friends. And he comes across an old photo of a buddy of his that died, like, in, you know, in Iraq. And so he just kind of sits and contemplates that. But for that whole time, it's like, you know, a minute and a half with the no dialogue, with no backstory or anything like that. So it's just kind of weird. You know, like, yeah. we have all this information because we wrote these characters and we built that world. Yeah. But none of the audience has any of that information. So we're like, okay, well, yeah, we got to cut that. That makes sense. Yeah, so who, who do you have around you that's like, hey, man, you should cut this? Like, how do you have you... Is everybody like that? Because I, I imagine... I think that, like, again, surrounding yourself with people mm -hmm. that... You need to surround yourself with people that are maybe not going to be an asshole about it, but like, right. going to tell you, like, hey, man. Yeah, just keep you honest. In any way, in any way. Just yeah, be, yeah, hey, yeah. Whoa, whoa, you know. So one of the producers on the show, his name is Jeff Cobb, and he's actually been in L.A. for the last 10 years, and he's been making stuff, helping to make stuff, right? Oh, okay. He's been, like, a first AD for 10 years. Um, he directed um, last, no, the year before, right before the pandemic, uh, he directed two shorts, and I flew out to um, to L.A. to help him with behind-the-scenes stuff. So that's kind of how I know him. Okay. Um, and he's one of the producers on the show. We sent it over to him. He's the one that's kind of giving us some notes about oh, it. Oh, okay. That's so, good. So that's super helpful because yeah. he's done a lot of that already. So, so he knows. Yeah. 
so he has a hand in it and it's nice to have some guidance and kind of what works and what doesn't work just because he's been doing it for so long you know so it can dude that's awesome so that's pretty nice so little things like that little touches like that is really helpful how did that uh, I forgot to ask you earlier how did that pop up you did how did bro, that go it was wonderful bro yeah. that was actually probably one of the most successful pop ups that we've done is everything else has always been in Dallas okay but obviously I'm from Lubbock and I have just a lot of support from people here in Lubbock. That's just that I know, you know, which is really nice. Um, just really nice to have your friends show up. You know, I appreciate you coming through as well, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we, we were a little faded, but oh well. <laughs> I don't even remember what we did that day. Man, y'all were pretty oh, lit. we did the photo shoot. Yes, that's right. I got drunk. Yeah. Drunk. Could never tell. I was actually with Swagadelic. <laughs> I yeah, was, I was with him that yeah, day. Yeah, that's right. That was a good day. That was pretty cool. It looked good. So how do you, uh, how do you, what do you have, like a screen printer? Or what? So we What's make it? everything ourselves, man, yeah. So I have a screen printer there in my garage. And then um, for like the hats, like this hat, like we usually we'll have to go send this design off to get embroidered. When we buy like a select number of hats. Where do you get those sent? These? Yeah. What in do you Dallas. get? Oh, in Dallas. Yeah, there's a shop. It's actually uh, like a mm-hmm. suburb of Dallas called Louisville Lettering. Uh, we go to them for a lot of stuff. Okay. Like if the color designs are too much, like anything over like three or four, um, usually we'll send over to them. They'll do it for us. Okay. So, but we try to like cut out as much as the middleman as, as possible. Yeah, because I saw you. I don't remember what I was looking at. But you put um, your your design on a on a face mask thingy, mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, I wish I. So that was screen printed. I need. To so get- that's actually a process called sublimation. Oh. Yeah. What so, is that? so sublimation is where they take like um, it's kind of like uh, have you ever hydro dipped anything? Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, so and that's okay. No, no, you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm glad to teach. So sublimation is um, like a process of like it almost looks like a printed out paper, right? Like a literal printed out paper. And what you do is you grab the garment and you push the paper on it like that. And it's like a super hot iron that essentially transfers all that paper, ink, all that stuff over onto the mask. So when you originally, uh, when you okay. get like a, that's like a who rag mask. Uh, when you get something like that, they're all white. And then that sublimation, they do it on both sides. So that's why the those are kind of monogrammed, just because they're a little bit easier to line up. Yeah, man, I, I, I truly believe in the, putting your logo on everything. Yeah, it's, fucking, it's important. I, I have fucking. I, I saw your yard signs. Dude, I have yard signs, dude. I, I have so, love those, man. so much. I'm gonna need to get you one. I have so many ideas. Like, I just like, and then like I follow like I use Sticker Mule. Yeah. And they'll just they'll, they'll do it on it. They'll, they'll eat me up with. Yeah. They took all. They took in all my money because yeah. they did a lot of shit. And it's a really cool <laughs> feeling, man. It's a really cool feeling seeing your logo. On I something. still have your bag, like your little brown bag. Yeah. <laughs> I want my shit on every like my legit logo. It's uh-huh. it's a little too, like uh, I think it's a little too detailed for like just to be. But the other one, like mm-hmm. the, the shirt you have, yeah, I could throw that logo on everything. Right. And I've been trying to do it. What's crazy is that original box go- logo. I shared it to like three friends uh, right when I was starting up, and they were like, "Bro, this is whack, bro." <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were like hardcore, like. Nah, this is this is this is lame. I don't like it. <laughs> I like for real. I freaking love it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, and now those guys buy those shirts all the time. Well, it's go. just what it is. Is just the perception of it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, just dream a little bit bigger. You yeah. know what I mean? Just dream a little bit bigger. You'll catch the vision. You'll catch the vibe, and it'll make sense. Because the whole reason that I started season three um, was because I wanted to be. Like, nobody, nobody reps for Texas, right? Like, so much of our pop culture and the way that we dress and the way that we live is influenced by L.A. and New York. Yeah. Like, by Hollywood and by New York, which is, I, I don't know why people feel so hyped up in New York. I guess just because it's been there longer, maybe. But, like, no <laughs> I have no idea. So, like, for me, I'm like, nobody reps for Texas. Nobody, like, Hell is yeah. really killing it in the streetwear zone for Texas either New York LA or Tokyo like those are the three places that I always see like 
trendy stuff coming out of it. But I never see anything out of Texas. Like, nobody ever rocks anything from Texas. And I always feel like they're a lot of hype beasts. And I feel like they're just hype beasts because they don't have anything local to believe in. Like, they want to be with the cool stuff. Yeah. But there's nothing cool locally for them to rep. But if there was, I feel like, well, this is where I can be, right? I can yeah. provide that. Because I was getting frustrated with going to, like, like Zoomies and PacSun all the time. I was like, man, these are all just, like, <laughs> these are lame. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even comment on this. But, but it's, like, the coolest thing that Lubbock has. Like, yeah. what else does Lubbock have that's yeah, cool? We don't got shit right Where now. can you go? You can't go to Mervyn's. <laughs> well... <laughs> Dude, that's what I mean. Like, if if I was an investor, uh-huh. truly, truly, if I was an investor, I would dump money in a little bit. Oh yeah, right now because there's so much. Oh, like, there's right there, now. Right now is like, I think it's gonna be like a prime spot. I really do. Right. And no. I hope I'm not eating my words later on. In the no, future. this is this is a the I, new dot com bubble. I think, you know, you could put a comedy store here. You got, you, you can fucking the Buddy Holly Center. You got people doing brands. You got sneaker stores now, vintage stores. You got you got me doing the podcast, and uh, you got so much shit just like waiting to like for people to come and see. I think. Right. I think this is I, the the thing that was holding Lubbock back for the longest time was that it was not it was the population. Yeah. Investors, oh yeah. Investors won't roll up to a city until there's two hundred fifty thousand people and, in the city. And then you have like, and then like uh, me and uh, my friend Bradley were talking about it. He was talking about with comedy because, like, you know, Rogan and Austin, like, mm-hmm. the biggest comedy comedians in the fucking world are going to go there. Right. Pushing out a lot of the locals. Right. And uh, even, like, Dallas and Houston. He's mm-hmm. like, well, where are they going to go? They might be coming here. Oh, I yeah. I think that might be, like, I think he was on to something. I think a lot of people are, because of, like, Californians are moving here and shit, I think a lot of people are going to flock here. Yeah. That, that really just can't afford to live over there anymore. And oh, I, man. I think, I, I really, like, I, I love this. I just keep saying I think this is a golden era right now. It's about to yeah, be like something. No, maybe it, like once COVID's like legit over. It definitely it, is. It'll be like the spot. I really do. No, I, I agree. That's <laughs> why there was even debate about opening the season three store here. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like, because I feel like you, I feel like we're close. It's, it's, we're on it's the cusp. It's coming. Something. So, I don't thing, know. I don't know what we're lacking yet, but it's here's what Lubbock is lacking. I'll tell you right now. Okay, let's hear a it. A super dope amusement park. Yes. Joyland. No disrespect to Joyland. I you've been holding. Joyland, though. You've been holding us down for forever. Forever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like we need a dope amusement park, and I feel like we need a dope water park. There's no reason that dude we Canyon have just got a things. really nice one. Did they really? My mom and them went. What's it home. called? Do you remember what it's called? I don't know what it's called, but All she right. said it's really good. Like it's and, bad advertisement. And. I've always wondered that too Like I guess with the population Like you're saying Like that's why Maybe why we don't have A, a really nice amusement park Right We need and, tourists and Yeah we I mean to, I think that Buddy Holly Center Is going to be Oh yeah Fucking amazing for us I'm going to park behind you Dude Wrap this one up here In a few minutes I'm excited about it I know that's what I, I, I just I feel I guess because I'm getting To know a lot of People Creative people mm-hmm. And I'm like don't leave just don't leave man please <laughs> just stay here and that, yeah man that that's the hard part yeah. is that because right. at a certain point you do become big enough to where you can get recognition elsewhere yeah right yeah. and it's hard not to leave yeah. it is I genuinely can't blame, hard. i can't blame them but I, and they do it for tax purposes yeah, you so, were the one that said something about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Because I was crazy. watching that episode, and I was like, no, no, no. Because no. I thought I used to think the same thing, because I would record weddings. Uh, I would do wedding videos, and those get super long. And after 29 minutes every time. 29 Even, like, minutes, the really more expensive cameras? Like, unless it's labeled as a cinema camera. Oh, okay. So this is not technically a cinema camera. Most cameras out there on the market right now are not cinema cameras. Like, they're just prosumer cameras. So they're very high end, very nice, but none of them are cinema cameras. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I spent all this money on this, and it's still yeah. shit. So it's just, <laughs> and it's for tax purposes because they have to tax the cinema camera way more than what they would tax just a photographer. Camera. Huh. So stupid because you can make a movie on a cinema camera. Ooh. I mean, technically, you can still make a movie on this. Are those a lot more expensive though? Cinema oh cameras? yeah, absolutely. They don't have like the same type of like autofocus. Like they're very bare bones, but super. Um, 
just super crisp. So like, there's never a moment where you could do an autofocus when it's in the camera. You would have to, they have a guy that's called a focus puller. And that guy's whole job on the whole set of the movie is to make sure that everything's in focus. And they do that through like a little digital tuner they have attached to the camera. It's crazy, bro. It's wild. There's a lot of money in that shit. It's huh? a lot of money. I like that was cool. You I think you posted it about that guy who did the deep fake. Yeah. And then he got a job. Yeah, man. Like, Stuff gonna, like that, man. I and he's just, just been doing it for free. I was just thinking though, like, well, first of all, that's really good on him. That's right. really cool. But like what the fuck, Disney? You got all that money, you can't do that shit. It's because <laughs> he designed that technology to do it. Oh, so he did just, it? Yeah, he did it himself. Oh, so it's not like I thought a, deep fake was like a yeah, it's not like a program that you can just buy. They just call it that, right? Right, they just call it oh, that. Oh, okay. But um, but they have programs oh, now better. that are kind of like that. Shout like, out to you, dude, because that's... That's a lot of coding and... Because I remember God, watching that originally when I was like, damn, this is really good. Right. The thing that upset me was the Justice League with the, uh, the, with the Henry Cavill with the, the stash. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I was have like, you, really? Have you seen um, It Part 2? I haven't seen It Part 2 yet. They did the... They were trying to like de age him. Uh huh. And it was. It didn't work. Oh man. Ah, it was horrible. Ah, I've been meaning to watch it. I just hadn't had the. That to that program, it. that type of shit scares the shit out of me. By the way. Oh yeah, because <laughs> they can fake anything, yeah. especially with you, because you have all these recordings on the internet. And you're telling about me about how you how you talk. Hours and hours. And it's how hard is it to just chop up some audio? You're right? telling me. Oh yeah, it's super scary, bro. <laughs> it's super scary. I'm but preparing myself. Just like when shit. you <laughs> fake a screenshot, people fake screenshots all the time. People, people will fake anything if it's available to do it. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. But you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. But I. Yeah, you're right. That's it. But um, like I, we were saying before this cutout, I think. Uh, it's a magical moment about to happen here. Or at least I hope. I don't know. I think so, man. I don't know. I think uh, a... we'll go to that Tom Segura show. Uh -huh. And we, we don't plan on going together. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, in, in January. <laughs> but I think that's the first stroke of genius. Because uh, even her and uh, or him and Whitney Cummings were like, you're doing a show in Lubbock, Texas? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah. Which makes sense. It's on the way. Right. If you're on a bus or whatever, yeah, it's on the way. Go ahead and, and stop. Now we in. have like really good place to actually stop. Right, it's not just Jake's all the That's time. That's what I'm saying, though. Man. It's no think, disrespect to Jake's, but I think like you're, the water park and the amusement park. Hmm, I don't know, maybe yeah, but I really think a comedy store. Comedy store would be the thing that would set store. it off. I think a comedy store. It definitely it helps. Will be like just perfect, or like a venue mm. outside of Buddy High, like a like a hall. I don't know. Have you been to that uh, Moonlight Musicals? No, I've heard about it. Dude, I went over there. I shot a commercial uh, for them. That was really nice. Like, I had never Where's been that? out there before. It's over there off of... Um, that's the other thing. It's off of, like, uh, Broadway, like, East Broadway. Like, it's way out there. Kind of bare. Do you know where that Stubbs statue is? Mm -mm. Way over there on the east side. So, it's next to the Dunbar Lake. Oh, like, okay. It's really nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a nice spot. But it's just way out there. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. So I, and that's because it's old Lubbock, right? Like mm -hmm. old Lubbock always has access to all kinds of extra stuff. But man, now that we're migrating south, once we hit like what, we're already at 150th, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's all that extra land. There's like maybe. Woodrow used to be Woodrow Road, but now there's mm -hmm. fucking houses and shit. It's coming, man. Not too far from you. It's definitely coming. It is. It is, man. And I'm gonna be here for it. I'm excited, man. Thank but, I, you. but I plan on leaving too. I'm just gonna let you guys know that. Damn. Eventually, eventually, I, I'm gonna be here for the good shit. But I'm as soon gonna, as you get him on and pop, <laughs> he's out. I'm out, man. I didn't want, I didn't want somebody to bring that up because I have said that on the podcast before. I'm leaving this fucking town, but not for a while. Not for a while. Not for a good while. Once I can have money to buy a ranch, I'm out. But Where would here. you get a ranch at these days? All the places uh, getting bought up. Ah, uh, I, I like South of Towns, by the way. I like the flat. I don't know. Is it not sold yet? The problem with it that I've heard from my, my father is um, mm -hmm. the water. You got to find a place of water. That's the other problem that we have, huh? Mm -hmm. Not right now. No, I like the outside of Lubbock. Right, yeah. yeah. But right like here, no, not really. Yeah. Well, there's a big old water thing. Yeah. Water tower right over there that they just built. Yeah, they got one right by my house, too. Nice. They just built. But So, Deadstock Chronicles? August 6th. August 6th. What time? That's a very good question. <laughs> we just announced the actual date, but 
No, yeah, no idea yet. We may pull a Kanye when we just we talk a lot about it and then not drop the whole thing. I respect it, dude. Shout out to him, dude. He's, did you read that he was paying a million dollars a night there because he started he decided to stay at the stadium. I seen his completed. room. I seen yeah. him. I didn't know that he's paying them. Well, he's worth he's a playing. billion, right? He's paying a million dollars. I don't care how rich you are. Nobody should be paying a million dollars to stay. I mean, if you got a billion, why wouldn't you fucking spend money like that? <laughs> There's no... I, look, I love the idea of being a billionaire. Right. But if you're going to be a billionaire, spend the fucking money. Yeah, definitely. Quit hoarding it. Yeah. Do something like that. Mm -hmm. Go to space. I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, Did I you didn't... see that they cut up... Uh, they changed the... What did they change? They changed the rules about being declared an astronaut. Really? So they essentially they just flew really high. Yeah, they but didn't they're really not go to space. astronauts because they didn't contribute anything to the research and development of all mankind. Fair enough. They just went up there to ride. That would be that. So they're not considered astronauts. They're just tourists. Hey, that's fair. That's fair. And I would astronauts do it. are like some fucking geniuses. I would do it again. <laughs> I would do it like two times a month if I had that money. <laughs> I fucking try to go to the moon. Why not? Because there are guys that like, um, I mean, if you had that kind of money, I mean, where you're making more money than you could ever outlive. You know I think I mean? he makes a couple million a, 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 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's how much those guys make. It's so crazy. <laughs> that that would be an insane amount of money. Because if somebody dropped a million dollars off to you right now, how much would that change your life? Forever. Would I could you, probably make that. Stay here? Yeah, I could probably make that generational wealth if we're being honest. Yeah, a million dollars can be made I'd buy, generational. I might. I'd buy me a nice piece of land, or a nice like house here. Dude, yeah. And then I'd buy like a place where I can build like a fantasy factory. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just for, a warehouse. The sneak. Pit. That's that's the whole. That's the best thing about those barn dominiums because it is. Yeah. It's a fantasy factory and a house. Yeah. Exactly. Like I, if I could do it, bro, I would have a barn dominium with some Starlink internet. Out in the middle of nowhere, and that just learn to fly because yeah. that'll be the other thing. There you go. But that's yeah. it. There you go, man. Where can they follow you at? Man, so follow me on my Instagram at the Chris Vargas. It's the best place to find me. I'm always on Instagram. Yep. There you go, people. Well, appreciate you doing this. Man, thank We're you. Gonna for have to let me come out. Do hang some, out. Uh, do some sneak pits and for sure create more content. I'm gonna get the cooking show ready. Dude, I'm excited about that, I'm gonna, bro. I, I had Because I see you cooking for Jen. I'm like, dang, this boy. I'm not cooking for Jen. I'm cooking for my family. Okay. <laughs> Jen just happens to be there. My bad. We'll cut. <laughs> no, I'm not cooking shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jen, I'm cooking for you, too. Okay, there we go. But. I, I always see. I just. I, I'm excited because I see the post. Like, you did that chicken parm. Oh, I was like, dude. dude the best thing I've ever made. Oh, this guy. Like, I'm not. Like, I'm not a chef at all. I definitely take advantage uh, of my air fryer for sure. Oh, I'm not a chef because I know I know <laughs> chefs. I'm lucky enough to be known to have known some chefs, and I just follow instructions. They they're Aaron, they're you know how you, you know how you expand your creativeness. Yeah, like you make it yours. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, that's how you know you're a chef. Right. I'm not that. You ever I'm seen fine. that movie, Chef? Uh uh. Oh my God! I'm about to put you on. Watch the movie, Chef, <laughs> tonight good. when you get home. You'll be like, All dang, right. and then tag me in the Instagram post. So I know you watched it. All right. <laughs> I watched. Uh, I actually watched the Green the Green Knight last night. That was dude, how was it? I've been wanting to watch it so very, bad, dude. You should totally. Very good. Because I I don't have anybody to watch it with. Well, I went with I went with Jen last night. But if you want to go, I'll go. With you. We can go okay. on. A, we can go on a, on a on a bro date. Bro dates, yes. Because yeah. I like that movie. It's, it was it, really good. And it's like, it's very a twenty four. I'll say. Oh that. yeah, dude. They make some really good movies. Yeah, I'm with it. It's good. Okay, but cool. I was that. thinking about hitting up Riley and see if he wanted to go watch it. Shout so. out to Riley again. Cool. But let's get it. Let's finish this. We'll All see right, you guys dude. next time. Thank you. And Peace. Please subscribe.